Introducing Ford Contour. Goal, a world car for the 21st century. Back in 1994, Ford introduced a new family sedan called the Contour, along with a twin, the Mercury Mystique. Built off of Ford of Europe's Mondeo platform that began in 1993, this replacement for the Tempo and Topaz sedans was heavily marketed by Ford as a new world car for the 21st century, yet differed from the European Mondeo to meet American buyer needs. The $6 billion investment forced a higher price than its competitors for a car barely larger in size than the Ford Escort, resulting in weak sales that even the high-performance Contour SVT model couldn't improve, leading to its cancellation by the year 2000. This is the story of the Ford Contour. This is my old car. The totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. In an earlier episode, I featured another car that shared some of its original design with the Ford Mondeo. That car was a Jaguar X-Type, a compact sedan that was saddled with the burden of not being a true Jaguar and never achieved the success that Jaguar, and more importantly, Jaguar's owner, Ford, had hoped. The X-Type shared a platform with the second generation Mondeo and was one of several attempts Ford made to take a successful European model and repeat that success in the US market. Ford's most successful attempt at making a European car work in America was the Ford Escort and was also touted heavily in commercials as being a world car. The European version shared the same name and a shared platform, but so much was changed on the American Ford Escort to satisfy the vastly different expectations of American buyers that very little in terms of parts could be swapped between the two. Despite that, the American Escort was a big hit for Ford for two decades. Ford tried to repeat that success by reworking the European Ford Sierra and Scorpio models to create the Mercure brand in the US, but that resulted in one of Ford's biggest and most expensive flops. Check out my Mercure episode to learn more. When time came for a replacement for Ford's Tempo and its twin, the Mercury Topaz, Ford considered a similar approach to the Escort. Ford's launch of the first generation Mondeo in 1993, which replaced the Sierra, was, as noted before, a huge investment and needed to turn around Ford of Europe's overall sagging sales, which had been struggling to compete with other European and Japanese models in the 1980s. The Mondeo has it all. Ford of Europe's future was dependent on a successful launch of the Mondeo, and its biggest selling point was its improved safety features, being Ford's first car to be designed and sold with a driver's airbag from its inception. Although it was never considered to be a sporty or luxurious car, it soon gained a popular following, especially in the UK. Mondeo from Ford. Sharing the Mondeo's body structure, powertrain, and suspension, the American version would be named the Ford Contour. As car design transitioned from the boxy 80s style to the more jelly bean look of the 90s, the name Contour helped emphasize Ford's more rounded design philosophy that Ford had been pushing since the introduction of the Taurus in 1986 and the Tempo in 1984. Like most of the other Ford models, a Mercury counterpart was also offered, called the Mystique, primarily differing only in the front and rear end and the shape of the dashboard. Drive the all-new Mercury Mystique. By using a platform that also sold in Europe, a compromise that the Contour was forced to accept was a smaller size. A compromise which would soon become one of its biggest liabilities. One goal, to create a new mid-sized car so advanced, it would be nothing less than the best car in its class. Although officially classified as a mid-sized car, it just barely met that classification, as it wasn't much larger inside than the Escort. Rear seat room was the biggest complaint among new owners who expected more room inside for a supposedly mid-sized car. The rear environment is comfortable, if a little cozy. I say cozy because both hip room and leg room are on the tight side. Engine choices for the Contour were Ford's ZTEC 2.0-liter 16-valve four-cylinder, making 125 horsepower as standard, or an optional 2.5-liter Duratec V6, making 170 horsepower, the latter engine having been co-developed with Porsche. However, there were eight other engine variants that were available for the Mondeo in other markets, including a four-wheel drive and a diesel version that never made it to the U.S. The Mondeo also offered an estate model, whereas a corresponding wagon for the Contour never happened. For those who once owned the Tempo or Topaz, the biggest surprise when shopping for a Contour or Mystique was the price. In order to recoup that $6 billion investment, a base model Contour with a manual transmission cost more than the highest trim tempo once was. When I say to my family and friends, ooh, it's got a Duratec engine, everybody's like, oh, really? <laughs> the Contour was a much better designed car, so maybe that cost was justified, but most potential buyers that came from a tempo were likely priced out of a Contour. 
For those that could afford the Contour, its small size made some decide to move up to the Taurus. This was especially true during the Contour's first model year of 1995, as Ford was offering incentives to help move the second gen Taurus before the third gen launch in 1996. Ironically, once the public saw the extreme jelly bean shape of the new Taurus, the Contour didn't seem so bad. Truman, I think I'm gonna throw up! Me too! But the Contour also had to compete with Chrysler's new cloud cars I drive a Dodge Stratus. in 1995. Later in 1997, to help improve sales, a new value-themed base model was offered for both the Contour and the Mystique. Although sales were still better in the UK than the US, the overall reputation for both the Mondeo and the Contour was that both cars were, to put it simply, BORING! In fact, in the UK, it was often called the mundane o But those of us who love cars have to keep reminding ourselves that many people buy a car simply because they need it, with less regard to how it looks. But with sales slipping, a refresh was definitely needed. So in January of 1997, for the 1998 model year, a more stylish front and rear end was offered. A change big enough that for the Mondeo, it was referred to in Europe as the Mark II. Some of us sense more than others. Woman, get back in here and make me a sandwich. The roof line and rear deck lid was modified to provide more legroom in the rear seat, one of the biggest complaints the car had from its launch. Even the Mystique was available with wood trim to make it look more upscale than the Contour, but of course, the wood was fake. But the biggest improvement was in 1997 for the 1998 model year, with the addition of the Contour SVT. SVT stood for Ford's Special Vehicle Team, which had previously upgraded both the Mustang and F-150 in 1993 to become the SVT Cobra and the F-150 Lightning. Although the Cobra had an upgraded version of Ford's 5-liter V8, the Contour SVT would have to make do with upgrades to its Duratec V6 that bumped horsepower from 170 to 195. It also got revised brakes and suspension, dual tailpipes, a revised front and rear end with ground effects, and a revised dashboard with black on white cages. Paired solely with a manual transmission, this bump in power decreased the 0 to 60 time from 9 to 7.5 seconds. Yet despite the improved suspension, some who tried to push the SVT Contour to its limits on the track found it to be too soft. And of course, the SVT treatment wasn't cheap, stickering at nearly $23,000 in 1997. That's over $40,000 today. Despite improved wheels and tires added later in 1998 and a five horsepower bump in 1999, Ford could only sell 11,445 SVT Contours between 1997 and 2000. It didn't help that they were only for sale in 700 SVT certified dealers. Although the SVT Contour is rare, Values are wide-ranging, thanks to there being very few left that are unmodified. If done right, some modifications can improve the value, but too often they do just the opposite. But with so few made, the difficulty of finding original parts has made these mods more commonplace. The SVT Contour also has a reputation for being a tough car for less experienced mechanics to work on, and as a result, has scared away some potential buyers not willing to take on the challenge. Regardless, they still have a strong fan base, as I'm sure a few will let us know in the comments. Despite the refresh in 1998, sales continued to slide for both the Contour and Mystique, the latter so much that Mercury decided to stop production by the end of 1999. Its reputation had gotten so bad by that point that many were calling it the Mercury Mistake. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and I'm about to rent a car. Ford limited the four-cylinder Contour models to fleet sales only, starting with the 2000 model year, and eventually all remaining sales went to fleets before production ended in October of 2000. <laughs> In the end, just under a million Contours and Mystiques were sold, which may sound like a lot of cars. But when you spread that million sales over six model years and across two divisions, for a car that was in a popular segment for the time and cost six billion to develop, it is no wonder why the Contour and Mystique today are often treated as a failure. Yet despite its decline, the automotive press at the time praised the car for its European driving quality, a comment that, at least to me today, seem to openly admit they considered American car makers, in general, produce substandard cars. Although Car and Driver put both the Contour and Mystique on their top 10 list for three years, from 1995 to 1997, they have since admitted that it shouldn't have been eligible. This was due to the car's small size for its price range, which should have been factored into the decision. They also agreed that the price range is likely the reason the Contour didn't achieve the widespread appeal it needed to remain in the lineup. With any remaining on the road now being over 20 years old, I can honestly say that I can't remember the last time I saw one. I do remember back when they arrived on the roads in 1994, and I had read about how expensive they were to develop. For what appeared on the outside as a small and simple looking car, that six billion seemed excessive. 
although I did know back then that some of that cost went towards the Mondeo, which, like the European Escort, had several differences from the American version, so the whole world car claim didn't seem to hold up. The failure of the Contour forced Ford to consider leaving this in-between compact and mid-size market, and instead focused, literally, on the Escort's replacement, the Ford Focus. Although the Focus had been introduced in Europe in 1998, it didn't arrive in the US and Canada market until about a year later, around the time that the Contour was entering its last model year. But with the Escort nearing the end of its run, it was clear the Focus was intended to replace the Escort, leaving no immediate successor for the Contour. In fact, the closest replacement would probably be the Fusion, which didn't arrive until 2005, leaving a five-year gap in their lineup. The Fusion, in comparison, was a huge success, at least in terms of expectations for vehicles that weren't trucks, SUVs, or crossovers. Eventually, the Fusion would be the last sedan Ford would sell in the U.S. and Canada, ending its run in 2020. Will Ford ever sell a small sedan here again? Let's just say I'm not holding my breath. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Yeah, I hit a dog. A dog. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid-2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.